Welcome to What's Treading with Tire Review, presented by Apex 2021. I'm Maddie Weiner, and today on the podcast, I'm joined by Abhishek Bisht, Assistant Vice President of the Americas at Apollo Tires. Abhishek, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maddie, for having me. Well, really thank you. Yes, no, th- thank you so much. And, and I'm I'm excited to talk to you because um, the Redestein brand in the U.S. that's under Apollo Tires has really grown exponentially since, uh, you know, Apollo debuted the Vredestein brand in the U.S. in 2019. Um, so I, I'm, I'm curious, from, from your perspective, can you describe how it's grown and your strategy for reaching and gaining the business of independent tire dealers in the U.S.? Sure, sure. Now, we, we're very pleased with the performance and how, how well accepted the brand is, especially with the consumers and with the whole retail network. Uh, in terms of strategy, I would say that our primary our primary goal was to only work with retailers who would appreciate that Fred Stein is the only legitimate brand in the tire world, which is not materially present in North America, and who would see this as the opportunity, and there isn't another another one for the next 30 years in the horizon. So, and the ones who saw this really went all out for it. The strategy is carved around retail. It is hugely focused on profitability, product superiority. It has to be, and you could see from all the external testing, each and every product brought into Americas after lots of significant investment, which pans well in excess of $30 million now over the last four years, have resulted in these great test results. Communication strategy has been quite refreshing as well, I would say. It breaks breaks the clutter and cuts through it, and it is achieving its objectives. So yes, no, we're very happy with the business performance. Uh, we're multiplying year on year, and yes, we continue to grow. Yeah, no, that's great to hear. And and you've you've mentioned um, in past times that we've spoken. You know, tire dealer profitability is. Um, you know, such such a big uh, focus for Apollo and the Vredestein brand. Um, can you kind of maybe go into some things that you all do that maybe others don't do that you feel sets sets the brand apart and Apollo apart in the in the uh, U.S. marketplace at least? Sure, sure. So Apollo, I think right since the time Apollo took birth, we've always found we we off we don't really refer to uh, our partners as dealers. We just simply call them partners and we generally try to build that feeling of partnership all the time. So we, the first and foremost thing is that we keep the partner at the center of our strategy. So the profitability has to be the core to the entire strategy. And we believe there are a few principles that are necessary for it. The first and foremost being consistency and transparency. Whatever is the discount program or the offer to the market has to be known, has to be open. Every partner must know it and every partner must know what they can actually achieve or what somebody else gets. It allows for our partners to have the confidence that they are procuring the product at the right price. That we believe is the foundation. The moment a partner feels that we are being unfair to them, or that they do not have a fair deal on the table. That we think is this is a sliding slope right there. And we don't want to have that consequence. We want that every partner knows his own costing, knows the costing at which maximum the product can be acquired, and hence then can confidently place the product into the marketplace with legitimate profitability. The second is that we believe in being non-negotiable. So all our policies are very transparent and they are absolutely non-negotiable. On the face of it, some partners might not appreciate it, but but once they get working with us, they love it because they know if, if we are willing to say no to them for anything extra, we do the same with others as well. And that is the basis for long-term profitability. Besides that, has to have a fabulous product. So we invest sufficiently in products 
marketing, it's always collaborative. We are trying to drive as much traffic to our partners, to the retailers. And it is not just about building a brand standalone. We're never competing for control over the end consumer with our partners. We never see it like that, that we need to have the control, not at all. We always want our partners to have the control. And that philosophy grows all product lines, whether and all brands, whether it's Apollo, whether it's Prairie Style. Like for, for example, for truck bus radial tires, mm -hmm. it is an announced policy that we will not be selling directly to any fleet unless they are 1500 power units and more. And that's an announced policy. It's a promise to the market. So that's our only route to the market is through the retailers. And that's what, you know, our long-term partners like about us. And that's what helps us grow as well. For sure. Yeah. Forming those partnerships, transparency, super, super important um, when forming relationships in this business, for sure. And you mentioned, you know, product innovation being at, you know, one of the core um, investments that Vredestein is making in its products for, for the North American market. Um, one of those that was recently launched is the uh, Vredestein Pinza AT, which is, uh, you know, the first all-terrain tire for the company in, in North America. So um, I, I'm curious, you know, what can we expect from the Vredestein brand in the U.S. come 2022? There's been, uh, you know, a lot of new products released um, for, for the U.S. market, for the North American market since your you know, uh, debut here in 2019, but what's coming in 2022? Can you give us any, any hints on new product launches, new segments, expanding into different you know, geographic regions? Sure, absolutely. The next product line that you're gonna see is the Pinza HP, or the highway terrain tire in both P and LT categories. You'll be seeing that early next year. And by the close of the year, you would also we would be really at the final stages with the MT launch as well. While that happens, we continue to add sizes to our UHP all season, our high performance all season, to the Pinza all terrain lines, and not to forget our all weather and winter portfolios, which are already some of the largest portfolios in the marketplace. So yes, the product journey continues in a in a big way. Uh, to give you an idea, just a couple of years ago, we catered to less than 5% of the North American market. By middle of next year, we would cross 85% coverage. So that's been the journey. And all this has been done by focused development, which is totally done dedicatedly for North America, for the US consumers. So, and that's, you know, the product results are showing for themselves all the effort that's gone in. Yeah, that's great to hear. And when you say specifically done for, um, you know, North American consumers, can you explain what that means? You know, it, sure. how does the North America, I'm curious, uh, and I'm sure our dealers listening to this are curious out there too, you know, what, what makes a North American consumer, consumer different from a European consumer or, you know, an, an Asian consumer, you know, what makes, what makes the North American market unique? Sure, sure. To start with, uh, the definition of the all season category in North America itself is different from Europe. While the European product is more skewed towards winter performance, the North American all season tire is slightly more tuned towards life and summer performance. But I would say in my, in my limited experience, I think the North American consumer is more demanding because the UHP all season product or the, the entire all season line is now tending to even hit winter characteristics closer to the European products. So no compromise on summer characteristics, no compromise on winter characteristics and no compromise on life. And that makes for a very challenging product development cycle. And not everyone can keep up with it. So that's one of the things. The light truck line, absolutely. America is the heart of it. And a very large portion of the entire global LT, LT potential lies in North America. 
So clearly when it comes to sizing or how finely segmented the product lines are, again, North America is quite, quite unique. So those are some of the products that are there. Even when it comes to the all weather line, there are some specifics mm -hmm. that wherein the North American consumer would be different because they still, even out of the all weather line, their demands on life mileage is higher so yeah it is it's it's a demanding consumer and that's what pushes all of us as companies to make better and better products and that's interesting and, and from from your saying you know uh from what you're saying you know apollo is really looking at that and saying no we need to design these tires for for these specific consumer characteristic and expectations is that correct absolutely absolutely well, we, North America is a long-term play for us. We are here to stay for the next hundred years. And we've got to do, we've got to start off right. And you can't do that by, by doing a quick fix on the product. No, we've invested five years in just developing products without selling a single tire. It's only when we were ready, we launched. Yeah, well, and that's such a testament to, to the quality, which which is awesome. And, and I know there's been a lot of, um, you know, different tests around uh, involving, uh, you know, the, the Redestein brand and the tires. And, and um, it's been interesting to follow the rise of the brand throughout, you know, in the U.S. and in, in North America. So very cool. So I'm curious, how has Apollo Tires responded to, you know, the challenges in supply? It has been very challenging, very challenging on all fronts. And just like other manufacturers, we face the same, same issues. Our response to the market has been slightly different, if I may say so. We've tried our best not to pass on these all these cost increases to our consumers. In fact, we've been probably one of the last ones who passed on, and we, we keep a tight calendar of it. And even after all this, we have not passed on any of the transportation increases. We've only passed on the raw material increases we believe that, yes, the transport increase has gone through the roof, the costs have gone through the roof. However, in the long-term scheme of things, this is a passing phase. And we cannot have, you know, at the worst time, we can't just pass off the cost to our partners. So we don't believe in that. We do not believe in container surcharges. We do not like that approach. So, so we've done, we've taken the hit, but it's all right. We, we know that we will, you know, weather this storm and come out stronger. So you're saying that, you know, short, short term pain, long term gain, I guess. 100 percent, 100 percent. Yeah. And when, when you're talking about transportation um, costs, you, you're talking about container, um, container costs, freight, things like that, correct? Absolutely. Container costs, freight, ocean freight or even uh, even port charges or inland right. transportation, all of them, all of them have increased, all of them have become more challenging and demanding and requires more operational resources. And the team is working day and night to try and resolve it and try and keep working on it. At the same point of trying, no, we're trying to ensure that we do not pass on these costs to our partners. So what's Apollo's vision for its presence in the North American market, looking out you know, five to 10 years, would you say? All right. Well, we, we'd like to plan, we have an announced goal of being a $5 billion company by financial year 26. So of that part, half a billion comes from the Americas, larger share coming from North America. Mm -hmm. So that's our stated goal. Um, happy to report that we are very much on track for that. And I am quite confident that we'll achieve it even before the next five years. So. So yeah, um, that's basically basically where we're headed to. This would include both our brands, Freyristein and Apollo. Apollo, as you know, we've launched recently in commercial vehicle tires and the response has been fabulous. Mm -hmm. Again, the Apollo truck tires were only brought into the market after four years of development and field testing by third parties. We're very happy and we know that we brought into the market an absolute unbeatable product.
in terms of product performance. And I'm sure the fleet owners, the consumers are going to love it. So, so there also we are quite gungo that the sales are going to increase dramatically. Very exciting. Is there, I'm just curious, and uh, I don't know if you can answer this question, but uh, with, with such a focus on the North American market, any plans for, you know, a manufacturing plant here? So the manufacturing facilities, they start making sense once, once you breach a certain, a certain turnover. And absolutely in our plans, we intend to breach those turnovers within a couple of years. So well, that's all I can say to that. But, but yeah, most likely it, it will be the natural progression. Got it. Okay. Well, very ex exciting time for Apollo Tires and the Vredestein brand. And I do appreciate your time today, Abhishek. Is there anything before we uh, sign off here that you'd like dealers to know about Apollo Tires or the Vredestein brand or, you know, how to get in touch with you guys to learn more? Sure. You can absolutely reach out to us on our website and we will promptly re reply. If it's Apollo, it's apollotrucktires.com. If it's Fredestein, it's fredestein.com. So feel free to reach out to us and we'll be very happy to respond effectively to it. Okay. Um, just want to wish all, all our partners and retailers in the trade a Merry Christmas and a very happy new year. No, oh, have, a, have a great year. That's all. Awesome. I wish you the same. Thank you. Thank you. And same to you. And and looking forward to seeing, you know, and, and following uh, the Vredestein brand's growth in the U.S. next year. I know you guys have some great things planned, new products planned. So um, we'll be there for it. But thanks so much for your time today, Abhishek, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much, Maddie. Thank you for having me.